YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we are finally diving into something that I have wanted to share with you all for a very long time. We are taking a look at the NVG50 night vision devices from AGM Global Vision. As always, I'd like to give you guys full disclosure on how I go about getting these products in for review. I met with the awesome crew over at AGM Global Vision last year uh, during SHOT Show 2020. After hanging out with a lot of the industry friends in the night vision game, I decided that I needed to start trying some gear out for myself, and of course, I wanted to create some killer content as well. So I invested in camera gear for recording at night, um, IR devices and weapon setups, and filmed a small teaser video showcasing the kind of content that I enjoy creating. You might remember this clip, which was shown on our Instagram page last year. Anyway, AGM liked what I had in mind and decided that a collaboration would be mutually beneficial. So they sent us over some units for us to start working with on a T&E basis. The unit I'd like to showcase is the one that I've been utilizing the most, which is the NBG 53AW2. I do want to preface this video with a few things. In my experience over the last year, I have found that the NVG world can be a bitter cold one or in some select groups, a great place with open-minded people. I say this because I've come across people with very strong opinions about what brand, what model, or what specs you have to have if you want to get into the night vision game. I've, I've come to realize that there is more to this than just having the top brand and model and more of understanding what you need versus what you want. Now, I'm not here to tell you that these NVG G50s are the best and you should go out and buy them over any other unit on the market. Uh, I'm here to show you and tell you about my experiences with them over the last year while using them to go hiking, uh, driving vehicles at night with them, shooting both rifle and handgun with them, and also attending training classes with them. Uh, I'm not a night vision expert by any means, however, I have learned some interesting stuff over the last year from friends with night vision, industry partners, and guys like Sam Houston and Don Edwards with Greenlight Tactical and TNBC. Uh, I encourage you to research anything you find beneficial in this video before purchasing any type of NVG device as they are obviously a serious investment. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the specs of these NVG 50s from AGM Global Vision. Uh, the exact unit that I have is the AGM NVG 50 3AW2. Uh, let's first break down the name. Um, the AGM is obviously the brand. The NVG means night vision goggles. Uh, and the 50 is the model in which it has a 51 degree field of view that is a little wider than their NVG 40 with only 40 degrees field of view. Um, the 3 means that the tubes are Gen 3 tubes. The A means that they are an auto gated set. Uh, more on that in a little bit. The W means that they are white phosphorus tubes instead of green, and the two means that they are level two, which specifies the clarity of the tubes in relation to the max amount of blemishes that can be present. Um, this unit retails for about $7,349. Uh, now, I know for some of you not in the NVG world are hearing this price right now and heads are exploding and jaws are dropping, uh, but just stick with me through this entire video and I'll show you how this price, in my opinion, is not as bad as it looks when comparing to other setups. So what does seven grand get you? Well, it gets you these guys right here. Um, and I'll say right off the bat, this unit feels solid and robust. Um, it only weighs about one pound, seven ounces. It can be powered by a single CR123 battery, which gives you 20 hours battery life um, or a single double A battery as well. The battery compartment is located on the front of the device directly under the power and gain control knobs. The battery cap is tethered so that it won't be lost. And it's also has, uh, it also has a battery symbol that's engraved in the unit to show the correct orientation for the battery. Above the battery compartment, you'll find the power knob, which turns the unit on and off, but also powers uh, the IR illuminator, which is built in and can be used when no ambient light is present uh, for the image intensifier tubes. You'll see a small dim red light come on when this occurs, which is centered in the front of the unit. Um, the other knob you'll see is the gain control, which is used to brighten or dim what you are seeing through the tube. Um, it's nice having a brightness control for when you move from places with more or less ambient light. The unit will come with both front and rear adjustable diopters. Um, this is great because it allows you to get that really fine detail focus. You'll also have bikini style pinhole covers uh, tethered to the unit, which allows MVG50s to be used during the day. 
These are often called daylight lens covers as they only allow so much light to enter the tube to prevent them from being damaged. Um, the unit will also come with different mounting options. I chose the dovetail mount um, that works best with my G24 from Wilcox. Um, I have found this to be the most popular mounting option among those running night vision, so that's what I went with. Now the last part of the unit I wanna go over is the articulating feature. Um, you can rotate both tubes out of the way if you no longer need to use the unit. Um, with the G24 Wilcox mount, you can still just rock it directly up and out of the way, but if you only have one hand, being able to rotate them up individually is a huge plus in my opinion. Okay, with all the physical aspects now out of the way, let's jump into the specs of the tubes themselves. Um, I know this is where the NVG world starts to go crazy. If you don't believe me, just look at the comment section of this video after it's been published for a month or so. Now, without getting too boring and technical, I'm going to try and simplify the specs to what I have learned in the last year. If you are getting into the NVG world, you will soon learn that it's not just enough to be able to see at night. Um, you have to see at night with a device that has a high FOM rating or figure of merit if you wanna be considered cool. Uh, in short, FOM is the performance value of the tube. Uh, this is calculated by multiplying the SNR or signal to noise ratio by the resolution. Now, when I pull out my data sheet that was sent to me with my MVG 50s, I see that the SNR is 25.3 and it has a resolution of 64. I multiply those together and I get a FOM of 1,619. Now, for my research, Gen 3 standard tubes must have a minimum resolution of 51 to 64 lines per millimeter. So this particular set is on the higher end, which gives us a bigger FOM reading. Uh, if the resolution was on the lower end, like 51 lines per millimeter, then we would only have a FOM of 1290. Uh, now, if you're wondering what the difference between 300 FOM might look like, I would say to check out this article posted by Falcon Claw. Um, they put together a blog post that shows the difference between 1600 and 1900 FOM on two similar units. Um, I think you'll be fairly surprised by the results. I know that I was. Um, I will also be sure to link that article down below in the, in the video description. Now again, I wanna preface this by saying I am no way an expert when it comes to night vision. I'm only sharing what I've learned in the last year from the community and recent class I took with Greenline Tactical. Uh, FOM isn't everything, but it's definitely something that will point you in the right direction in regards to choosing a night vision setup. Um, I definitely recommend joining some Facebook groups for night vision or reaching out to Sam Houston himself of TMBC. Um, he goes by Silent Solutions on Instagram. He's definitely a wealth of knowledge when it comes to night vision. Now, earlier I talked about the auto gating feature of the unit. Uh, simply put, auto gating controls the amount of light reaching the actual tubes when you are in environments um, that have sudden changes in light conditions. Uh, think of it as like an auto dimming feature or automatic setting on your camera. Uh, it will automatically adjust for light conditions. To give you a better understanding of this, uh, here's us walking through the house with different lighting configurations in each room. I will also show how well the built-in IR Illuminator works with an indoor setting such as this house. All right, guys, now we're just gonna give you a walkthrough of my house with different lighting conditions. So I have lights on in certain rooms and uh, lights off in others, especially as we go upstairs. So I do have the unit set at full bright because when we go upstairs, there's gonna be no ambient light whatsoever. As you can see, going in the bathroom with a little bit of light shining through, the studio fully lit. But now here, as we go upstairs, you'll start to see how dark it gets and how the MVG 50s, you can still see what you're doing moving around Whereas on the phone recording normally, you can't see anything. One room there, another room here, going into the master. So yeah, with very little ambient light, these things are working awesome. We'll go back downstairs now and kind of focus on the auto gating and how it will dim as we go into brighter uh, rooms, brighter environments, it'll adjust. That way it's not so washed out. But yeah, that's how that whole thing is set up and how it works. We're gonna go back up and now we'll run with the IR Illuminator inside so you can see how that runs as well. All right, so we're gonna go back into the master bedroom that we were looking at before. And you'll notice here if I look in the corner where it was pitch black before, I'm going to now turn on the IR Illuminator and you guys can see how bright that gets now. Kind of going to the mirror here. That's what's coming off of the IR illuminator. That's what it looked like under nods if somebody looked at you. In the bathroom, I'll turn it off now. Little to no ambient light here. See how dark it can get, but then we crank it back on.
And one more time. Off. And on. And then one more time to show the auto gating. Dark bathroom here. Over to the studio. You'll see that everything kind of dims down and adjusts for that ambient light. Back over to the bathroom where it's dark and everything starts to get brighter. Something else to note is that night vision devices work off of ambient light. Um, to really put the unit to the test, I wanted to go somewhere uh, where there was little to no light pollution. As you guys know, I live here in Las Vegas, so the strip definitely will give a lot of ambient light in the sky. Uh, for this reason, I drove out to Red Rock Canyon late at night and got out and walked around. Um, here's that footage now. All right, guys, we pulled off the main road out here uh, towards Red Rock, the little Calico Basin exit. As you can see in my car right here, you can kind of see the detail through. I mean, you can really see the detail. I wanted to get off the main drag away from all the light pollution. If you pan over there, Matt, that's where the strip is and that's where a lot of the light pollution is. So I want to get away from that so we can kind of see um, how well the NVG 50 device is working out here with little to no ambient light. We do have a super bright, almost half moon. If Matt pans up to it, it probably comes out super bright there. And if you look a little more over here to the left, Matt, you'll see a bunch of the stars. I mean, it picks it all up really well. But like I said, I wanted to come out here where there's little to low, uh, little to no ambient light and kind of walk through here and just kind of show how well the MVG 50s are working out here. Um, typically when we go out and shoot in the desert, it is conditions like this. We're a little closer uh, in towards the city, so we do have a little more light pollution. But for you guys that are wondering um, how well do these devices work in little to no light, this is well, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night in the middle of the desert. And this is what you can see. Pan out here the landscape mat. I mean, as you guys can see, it's pretty dang awesome. So right now I'm gonna have uh, Matt, he'll switch on the uh, IR illuminator and we'll uh, show you that footage now. All right, so what's nice about this device as well is it's got a built-in IR illuminator uh, up on top center between the two uh, devices. I'll switch it on here. You saw it flash on there. And now you're gonna give yourself just that much more uh, visibility. Here again, I'll mess with it. That's off. You pull it out and then it pops on. And again, here's my car. Here's the detail that you can see. You can read the lettering and it's kind of good for up close. Looking at some uh, shrubbery here. That's with it off. And then that's with it back on. If you guys are hearing a little motor noise, um, that's the uh, auto gate, auto gation um, with the unit uh, changing how bright the actual uh, device is taking in light with, um, I guess, I don't know how to say it, your, uh, your surroundings. So, you know, like when I pan over to the moon and it's super bright, it's going to adjust to uh, compensate for that so it doesn't like wash out everything you're trying to see. I'm gonna pull up some footage of my other phone. You guys are looking at the, the mountain line that goes toward, back towards the strip. So if I go over here and record it on my phone, I'll kind of show you guys what you can see side by side. You can barely see what that looks like on just the phone by itself, but when you have the uh, MVG 50s on, it is completely visible. Um, just super cool. But yeah, I figured the best place for us to go do this was to come out here and I'll get Matt back on camera. And so that's Matt on the left side of your screen in complete pitch black. And then that's him looking through the MVG 50s. So. Thought this would be a cool comparison for you guys. All right, let's head back. I do want to mention that background noise you were hearing again. Um, the way that we filmed this footage was by mounting an iPhone to the unit with a metal mount. The vibration of that motor transfers through that metal and into the phone, which amplifies the sound. Uh, and that's what you're hearing. Um, you're not going to hear this when using the unit on a helmet during normal use. And I'll also show that now. All right, guys, so like I was saying in the tabletop portion, uh, we had the phone mounted directly to the unit when we were out in the desert. We're gonna now take Matt's iPhone, have him walk up here, get lined up. I'll turn the unit on so you can see through there what, we, what you would normally see with the unit on. Um, you might still hear the presence of the motor. However, it's nowhere near as loud and as amplified as it was out in the desert. Um, just know that if you're out there recording with any type of device that has autogation, the autogation feature, the motor inside, you're gonna hear that vibration as it transfers through the metal mount onto your iPhone, whatever phone, Samsung, or your uh, camera device. 
but I did want to showcase that. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about it. So if you do hear that noise, it is normal, but it's not as present when you use um, the, the night vision goggles in a normal, like, normal use. Having it mounted to your helmet, stuff like that, you're not gonna hear it as loud as you did in the video. In addition to that, I went down a side road and blacked out so that you could see what it was like driving while looking through night vision without headlights or ambient light. Um, I want to note that we did drive this roadway prior to using it uh, to ensure that we had a clear stretch of road where no one was present uh, for obvious safety reasons. Um, if you go back in our videos or our Instagram feed, you're, we also did some off-road uh, driving with our buddy James Strickland uh, in his off-road vehicles, his side-by-side. -side. We did that out in the desert where we just ran night vision and that was like definitely next level fun. Okay, so let's break down the question that I know a lot of you guys are going to have. Um, are these the night vision goggles that I should get? Uh, well, guys, this is a loaded question, which I think needs to have a lot of research done behind it. Uh, now, I know some of you down below in the comments right away are going to be screaming, you have to get DTMVGs, you got to get RMVGs, nah, you need to go DTMVS, you got to rain down on those pores, uh, screw it if you don't have night vision that's under $10,000. Um, this is what I commonly find in the night vision forums when someone asks about night vision that isn't more than $10,000. Now, don't get me wrong, it would be great to have uh, a set of night vision devices with a high FOM rating, um, like what the new DTMVSs are. We'd love to have those on hand, and eventually we will, um, but those run in the $12,000 to $13,000 range. Um, is there a noticeable difference? Sure, 100%. Is the difference enough to justify the cost? Well, again, that's a loaded question, and in my opinion, it's going to be up to the individual buying the unit. For example, I ran these MVG50s in the Greenline Tactical course a couple weeks back, and I was in the better half of the shooting group when running drills. Uh, granted, I have been shooting for a very long time, but my gear was still more than capable to allow me to function in low light at the same level, if not higher, than the other guys that were running higher equipment, higher grade equipment. Um, now, this also brings up another good uh, point in regards to everything you need when running night vision goggles. It's not just the MVG device, guys. Um, you also need a helmet, you need a mount for that helmet, and then you need some type of IR laser or uh, illuminator for your weapon platform. With that being said, I can get the NVG 50s for about 7,400 bucks, and that's full retail. You could probably even find it less. And then I can also get a BE Myers Mall for under $3,000 and still be two grand under what it would cost me to get a higher specced out set of tubes. Now, I'm not saying that the NVG 50s are better. What I'm saying is that they got the job done for me with no problems and still allow me to get other gear needed to play at night. Um, if you have the bankroll, by all means, get the best specced out unit that you can find that doesn't have a six month lead time. Good luck with that. Um, we are definitely going to have more educational style night vision content coming out throughout this year. Um, I wanted to start out with these units from AGM Global Vision as they were kind enough to work with us and provide these units for us to run over the last year. Uh, we appreciate their investment into what we are putting out and we definitely think that their units are more than capable of getting the job done. Uh, as you have seen, using these at night is like having a superpower, guys. Uh, whether you're hiking, driving, or training on the range at night, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with the MEG 50s. Like I said before, when it comes to night vision, what you are getting at this price allows you to get all the other gear needed to hang out with the cool kids at night. Overall, I have found the AGM 50s to be a great unit, especially as the first ones I've had the chance uh, to use on a consistent basis. Um, I think you'll find yourself pleasantly surprised if you were to purchase this unit. Okay, now for a couple of things I wish that were different about the unit. Um, I did notice that when trying out other night vision devices, the focal length on the MVG 50s weren't the best. Um, I had to have them really close to my eyes or against my eye pro in order to take full advantage of that 51, fill, uh, 51 degree field of view. Um, they do also come with like the rubber cups that you can have all the way up against your eyes. So if you don't want to run um, eye pro and have them as close as can be, I definitely recommend wearing those that come with it. They did help out. Um, I also wish that there was built in rings to connect the helmet bungees. Um, I had to wrap my own paracord and then connect um, those to the bungee system on the helmet. Uh, this is just to prevent them from falling to the ground in case the mount were to fail. Um, those are honestly my only two gripes about the unit. Now I do want to touch on this. Uh, I have received a few questions over the last year in regards to my experience with night vision as it pertains to my previous career in law enforcement. I believe there's a misconception about a correlation existing between law enforcement and the use of night vision, uh, at least in my situation. Um, I'm not sure how it was with other agencies, but with the LVMPD, the only people that were authorized to run night vision or even IR devices is SWAT. Um, as a patrol guy, I didn't have any experience with night vision. I didn't even start playing around with night vision until about two years ago, um, just 
being a private business in the industry. Again, everything I am sharing with you is just what I've come to learn over the last year from other guys in the night vision game. Um, I highly recommend doing your own extensive research if you plan on buying a set of night vision devices. Check out the specs in depth before purchasing them um, because you wanna know everything about them and what all of the different acronyms and symbols and all that stuff means. Um, for example, you might see like the same MVG 50s that I have here, the three AW2s. You might see them for a way cheaper price, but when, when you read the, like the actual spec sheet, it might say that they're using Gen 2 Plus tubes instead of Gen 3s because under that three symbol, you can use Gen 2 Plus. Um, but at the same time, you might look at the spec sheet and you might see a reading that says that the FOM is actually higher than like other Gen 3 tubes out there because the Gen 3 only goes off of a minimum. So if you happen to find a cheaper unit that's Gen 2 Plus that has higher specs, a better FOM reading, it might be better to go with that because you're saving yourself some money so you can get that other gear that we talked about. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up our review on the MBG 50s from AGM Global Vision. Um, I hope this video helped some of you out there. For those of you that are familiar with the MBG world, leave us a comment down below on the things you'd like to see us do in the future or anything that you think we could have done better in this video. We appreciate the constructive and supportive feedback. If you did like the video, consider giving us a thumbs up down below because that does help out the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing because we post new videos every week. Um, if you wanna support our content even further, check out that Patreon link down below. Our Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, special discounts, and giveaways. They are a huge reason why we can keep creating these videos for you all to watch. As always, guys, thanks again for checking out the video, and I will see you in the next one. YouTube, what's going on? If you, uh, it's because these are my, my normal way. You, <coughs> you will certainly learn, CERN, I said it again. Be two grand under what it would cost for like a really super high end spec out sheet uh, with, with a spec out. Oh, I had it spec out MVG set.